Hello everyone, my name is John Dole. With you as always here in Tokyo for another edition of the Ghost Layers Report. Now, sometimes TEPCO will come out and admit something that is pretty obvious to most people. This latest admission is no different. It's come out that TEPCO has basically said they did something that led to the cores at Fukushima melting down. And here's what they did. Uh, now this has come from Ashi Shimbom on uh, a recent report released by TEPCO on December 13th. Uh, it said water that they were pumping into the reactors to try to cool the cores, most of that water never made it to the actual core. Why? Because what they were doing were using fire trucks connect them to the um, system that pumps water in. Well, there's always other different pipes within the system that divert to other devices that need water. And that's where most of the water ended up. Which is quite, I mean, you know, it makes you wonder, did they even know the design of the, of the reactors? I mean, they're the ones that bought them and put them in there. Of course they have the diagram somewhere. They have to. But that's never really questioned in the mainstream media, or in media in general, here in, here in Japan. Now, exactly what happened here? They said TEPCO said that seven times the required volume of cooling water was pumped into the number two reactor, as well as other reactors, but the water failed to cool. And the other reactors, any of the reactors, efficiently, and it could not stop the core meltdowns in the number one, two, and three reactors. So, you know, they first tried it in number two. And they started pumping water into the other reactors. And they noticed this is not working. We have a problem. So, at that point, they did look at the diagrams. And they knew what they had done as early as late March 2011. They've known about this for a long time. And they haven't said a word to anyone. And why would they until now? Or, a bigger question, why are they saying this now? Well, it's because they're desperately trying to get one of the reactors in another plant restarted. I believe that's at the um, Kashashigawa. I believe it's the name of that place. It's not far from actual Fukushima, to be honest. It's on the other side of the island there. Right now, they've said they've got a solution for this problem. If this emergency situation ever happens again, they said uh, they've installed electric valves in the reactors at the Kasha, Kashiwazaki excuse me, nuclear power plant. <clears throat> they say, well, if it happens again, we have these electric valves that can, you know, efficiently shut off the extra pipes. And we'll be able to get the water where it needs to be. You know, when it comes to nuclear power, and you have an emergency situation, you only get one chance to fix something. And after you've proven that you did not even know at the time how your own reactors were even designed, how can people have any confidence at this point that putting in these electric valves will solve this little problem you have? Who's to say those valves are designed properly? Considering, you know, the state of Fukushima was in and your ability to even understand and handle problems when they do come up. So, you know, that's why they're admitting this. They're trying to say, oh, we made a mistake, but we have a solution for it now. So everything's okay. 
let us turn on some reactors so we can make some money. You know? But the news gets better here. This admission is coupled with something else that's recently come out. Uh, the, power, the Committee on uh, Energy Policy has recently come out and said that Japan should embrace nuclear power as an as important and fundamental energy source. That's interesting. Very interesting, considering something that is not being mentioned here, which I did a video report on a while back, and I'll put a link through here somewhere. You can watch that video, and all those, also in that video's description box, it links to an article that talks about this. A while back, Shinzo Abe purged that committee. I believe almost of every one of the members of that panel. Interestingly enough, every person who was on that panel, who he purged, had clearly stated that no, we should not be turned on reactors, we need to abandon nuclear power, there's no way this industry can redeem itself. There's no way this industry can handle it. We've got to get rid of it. That was under the um, Democratic Party Japan when they were in power. But as soon as you know, at this point, the fascist LDP, led by the fascist Shinzo Abe, swept back into power, one of the first things he did was purge this panel. So now, he's replaced people who will give him the opinion he wants. So now the same exact panel is giving a completely different answer. It's because of that purge that happened that not many people seem to notice at the time. So you see, this is gradual. The building up to this, you know, anyone who gets in their way we're going to get rid of. And we've seen this gradual, gradual building of things. And now, you know, we, we, we got the state secrets law here that needs to be brought up time and time again. Because I'm telling you, as, as we go forward, reports like these are going to be harder for the journalists here in Japan to get. You know, so... We need to back reference stuff, of course, and find out why all these sudden changes are happening in opinions and feelings within the bourgeoisie government. They get rid of people who won't go along with them and replace them with people who will serve the interest of the capitalist and serve the interest of the almighty prophet. So that's all we're going to say now about this. So, as always, if this is the first time you see me, please subscribe. You'll get lots of videos like this, plus a slew of other things that I'm sure you'll find interesting. So, until next time, this is me, John Doe, in Tokyo. Checking out.